A group of protesters gathered in South Los, An Los Angeles on Monday. This after deputies with the Sheriff's Department shot and killed a black man during a confrontation. It is the latest protest in the U.S. involving police conduct. An investigation into Monday's shooting is now underway. We don't have video of the incident, but these protesters are gathered near the scene. And according to officials, the confrontation started when two deputies observed a man violating vehicle codes while riding a bicycle. When the deputies approached the man, officials say he punched one of the officers in the face. They also say he had a handgun. CNN will bring you more information as it becomes available. And further up the West Coast, police in Portland, Oregon, have declared a riot after fires were set and other criminal activity occurred near an apartment believed to be home to Portland's mayor. This scene has become a nightly occurrence with demonstrators facing off against police. At least two nearby sheriff's departments are refusing to send deputies to help contain the protests after a fatal shooting over the weekend. Despite a call from Oregon's governor for help, they say policy disagreements and a lack of political support create unacceptable risks. Well, more details are emerging about the fatal shooting in Portland on Saturday night. CNN's Brian Todd breaks down what happened. I love it when I hear revving engines. Not really, it kind of scares me. Shooting witness Justin Dunlap seemed to have a sense that trouble was moments away. Seconds later, he was proven right. Police are now looking for a suspect in this shooting, which occurred Saturday evening in Portland. The victim who was killed, according to the New York Times, was wearing a hat with the insignia of a far-right group called Patriot Prayer. That group's leader mourned the man's loss in a Facebook posting. Portland police have now identified the victim as 39-year-old Aaron Danielson. The shooting came during a series of confrontations in downtown Portland on Saturday which occurred when a group of Trump supporters drove into the city in a large convoy. Videos posted online showed fights breaking out between people in the pro-Trump convoy and other demonstrators. And the Trump supporters are seen firing paintball pellets and spraying mace from the backs of their vehicles. Justin Dunlap, the witness who videotaped the shooting, was asked by CNN what the victim was doing just before being shot. He raised his hand and the mace came forward, I I don't know what he had in his hand, if it was mace, if it was something else, but that's the direction the mace came from was him, and it was a huge cloud, like 20 feet long, and then the cloud just exploded, and the, t the shots rang out. Then Dunlap says the victim took four steps and fell face down, and two other men, he says, ran in another direction. Portland's police chief said his force had a strong presence on the streets on Saturday night, but still couldn't get its arms around those confrontations. We had folks stationed at different areas, but it's very difficult when you have small groups of people spread throughout the city too, who sometimes um, engage in violence acts with each other. I mean, we only have limited resources, so we can't be everywhere at the same time. President Trump tweeted, rest in peace, referring to the Portland shooting victim. But the president so far has said only this about the shooting of Jacob Blake in Kenosha, Wisconsin, referring to video of the Blake shooting. I'm looking into it very strongly. I'll be getting reports and I'll certainly let you know pretty soon. But I'll be, uh, it was, uh, it was not a good sight. I didn't like the sight of it, certainly. The Wisconsin Department of Justice and federal officials are investigating the Blake shooting as protests there have continued. 17-year-old Kyle Rittenhouse faces homicide charges for the shooting deaths of two protesters in Kenosha last week. As curfews continue to go into effect in Kenosha County, the sheriff says more than 200 protesters have been arrested there since the Blake shooting. More than half those people, he says, from outside Kenosha. There are people from outside Kenosha, outside Wisconsin, and we've had some that are outside the United States calling in here to scare people of what, <laughs> what's going to happen. President Trump, meanwhile, still planned to travel to Kenosha, Wisconsin on Tuesday to meet with law enforcement officials and to survey damage, despite appeals from Wisconsin's governor, lieutenant governor, and the mayor of Kenosha for him not to come right now. The White House said there were no plans for the president to meet with members of Jacob Blake's family. Brian Todd, CNN, Washington.
A conspiracy theory that started its life in the US appears to be spreading in other parts of the world. Thousands of people gathered in Berlin last weekend to protest against coronavirus restrictions. Among them were supporters of the QAnon conspiracy, a right-wing movement that claims satanic members of the so-called deep state are plotting to destroy US President Trump and engage in child sex abuse. Fred Plaken joins us now from Berlin, and Fred, it is extraordinary. How did this US-based right-wing conspiracy movement find a home there in Germany? Well, it certainly seems uh, it's something that's been building up, Rosemary. It's also something that's being hotly debated here in Germany as well. In fact, it's quite interesting. This morning, the police union here in Germany came out and said that these uh, protests against the pandemic measures that have been put in place by the German government are in danger of being completely hijacked by right-wing extremists. And we went into these protests this weekend, and we did see a lot of folks who uh, follow QAnon also among those right-wingers. And a lot of them told us, quite frankly, they believe that they are followers of President Trump. Here's what we saw. An attack on Germany's democracy. Protesters from a demo against the country's coronavirus restrictions tried to storm the German parliament on Saturday. Among them, people carrying flags of the German Reich, a symbol that is now associated with Germany's far right, along with Russian flags, but also U.S. flags. We also found many supporters of the QAnon conspiracy theory. This man waving a rice flag with the QAnon symbol and the likeness of President Trump. Do you like Donald Trump? Yes, I like Why? The deep state have long time um, manipulated the people, the human, and that must end. QAnon is a sprawling conspiracy theory that claims, without evidence, that a group of Satan-worshipping members of the deep state are plotting to destroy President Trump and establish world domination. They claim measures against the pandemic are part of that conspiracy, and, at least according to some we spoke to, that President Trump is an angel. She's an angel. Yeah, for me, no. Donald Trump. <laughs> yes. Why? Yeah. He has to keep the connection. He has a connection. To who? To the universum. Yeah. So, you will see. Wait, the 3rd November and then the 4th November, the pandemic is finished worldwide. President Trump has retweeted claims from accounts linked to QAnon hundreds of times and has repeatedly refused to denounce the QAnon conspiracy. Well, I don't know much about the movement other than I understand they like me very much. Uh, which I appreciate. But the president's words are undermining Germany's own response to the coronavirus pandemic. Angela Merkel's government is generally viewed as being successful in combating COVID-19. But at Saturday's demonstration, she and members of her government are pictured in what seemed to be concentration camp inmate suits calling for her to be locked up. Another man in a Trump shirt and a MAGA hat saying this. What do you think about Germany's chancellor, Angela Merkel? Because internationally, she's been praised for the way she's dealt with the coronavirus crisis. I think she is Hitler's daughter. You think she's Hitler's daughter? Yeah, that's I think. And Rosemary, uh, Angela Merkel is not Hitler's daughter. In fact, she was born long after Adolf Hitler died. But I think one of the things that we really noticed at this protest, and it's something that we've been seeing sort of build up, is that at events like the one that we saw this weekend, with a good chunk of conspiracy theories there, people who follow conspiracy theories, you know, in the past, you would see a lot of people like that maybe having Russian flags on them. But it's increasingly uh, the case that there's American flags out there as well, and people who pledge loyalty to President Trump, Rosemary concern, isn't it? And it's so anti-science and anti-logic. Uh, Frederick Plack, and many thanks uh, for joining us. Appreciate it.